personal protective equipment or PPE in microbiology laboratories. To enforce safety in a microbiology laboratory, every person working inside must have the proper uh, personal protective equipment or PPE. Doing so will protect anyone from workplace hazards like thermal burn, infection, and other biohazard dangers. What is PPE? PPE includes all clothing and accessories that can resist unsafe or infectious material. PPE can include items such as safety glasses, goggles, face shield, gloves, lab coats, aprons, earplugs, and respirator. In appropriate situations, disposable PPE may be provided, for example, single-use coveralls. Employers have duties concerning the provision and use of PPE at work. Why is PPE important? In the hierarchy of risk control, PPE is considered to rank lowest and represent the option of last resort. It is only appropriate where the hazard in question cannot be totally removed or controlled in such a way that harm is unlikely. For example, by isolating the hazard or reducing the risk as source to an acceptable level. PPE is designed to provide protection from serious injuries or illnesses resulting from contact with chemical, radiological, physical, electrical, mechanical or other hazards. Careful selection and use of adequate PPE should protect individuals involved in chemical emergencies from hazard affecting the respiratory, respiratory, respiratory system, skin, eyes, face, hands, feet, head, body, and hearing. No single combination of protective equipment and clothing is capable of protecting against all hazards. That PPE should be used in conjunction with other protective methods, including exposure control procedures and equipment. How to choose appropriate PPE for working in the microbiology laboratories? Determining the level of PPE required can be tricky, but when dealing with biohazards and other hazardous materials, you don't want to take a chance. So, how do you want, how do you know what you need? Biosafety in microbiological and biomedical laboratory of BMBL is a resource put out by the US Centers of Disease Control or CD, CDC that recommends best practices for safely conducting work in clinical and biochemical laboratories. It outlines the level of PPE required based on the work being done in the lab. PPE should be carefully selected to ensure that it is compatible with the chemicals and other process used. The biosafety levels and their requirements can be summarized as followed. Common PPE needed in the microbiology laboratory setting. Here are examples of what you need. For body protection, you will need lab coat, long pants, gloves. For food protection, you will need closed toe shoes, shoe cover. For face protection, you will need eyewear, eye protection, face shield. And for respiration, you will need atmosphere, a supplying respirator, air purifying respirator. And in the picture, here are the common PPE that you will need. Let me give you the explanation on each part. Body protection. First, lab coat. Before entering a lab, every employee, trainee, and visitors must wear a properly fastened lab coat. It must be free from reps, holes, debris, and contamination. The right size must reach the wearer's knees. Lab coat must be entirely made of cotton or fire resistant materials. This is to protect the wearer against pyrophoric substances, open flames, and minor chemical splashes. Second, long pants. Short 
All short skirts are highly discouraged when working in the lab. This type of clothes won't be able to defend against hazard that can hit the lower parts of the body. This is why long pants must be used. Third, gloves. All procedures made in the microbiology lab must incorporate gloves. However, different situations require different type of gloves. They can be impervious to chemicals or heat. Aside from resistance they give wearer should also consider how to how a certain kind of glove will affect their dexterity. While there is no single glove material that provides 100% protection from all chemicals, a good all-purpose glove is the nitrile exam glove. Latex gloves, which have been the most commonly used glove in the labs for many years, are not resistant to many of the most common solvents found in the labs. Additionally, latex is a natural product that is also a powerful allergen which readily becomes airborne on glove powder each time a glove is removed. Most hospitals have banned the use of powdered latex gloves. Many institutions have banned latex gloves entirely. Gloves should fit perfectly into one's hands. Disposable gloves must be thrown to a biohazard waste respiratory repository after use. Face protection. First, eyewear. Like gloves, there are several types of eyewear for various conditions. Safety glasses are enough for most tasks, but for situations with a higher risk of chemical splash, for example, soldering or machining or grinding, protective goggles are recommended. Safety glasses must meet the ANSI Z87.1 2010 standard for impact resistance and have side shields for splash protection. If using, if using prescription glasses, wear the appropriate protective uh, eyewear over it. Using contact lens is not advised. The goggles and glasses should be comfortable, cleanable, and undamaged. Second, face shield. A face shield protects the wearer from the forehead to below the shin. There should not be an alternative to eye protection. Instead, wear face shields on top of the safety glasses or goggles. Foot protection. Closed toe shoes. To have a barrier between the foot and workplace hazards, wear closed toe shoes. They provide better protection compared to sandals, crocs, and clothes sneakers. Shoe cover. If doing laboratory activities that involve large volumes of fluids, using chemical resistant shoe covers or overshoes are a better choice. This will prevent infectious material that can contaminate regular footwear. Respirator. Inhalation of harmful chemicals is one of the dangers in microbiology laboratory. However, this is avoidable as long as nobody intentionally snips a substance in the lab. If a material's odor is needed, wafting should be performed. Keep in mind that respirators are treated only at the last option. It should only be applied when the situation is professionally evalu evaluated and no other safety means is deemed fierce visible. What is the difference between an N95 filtering face, face piece and face mask? A face mask are losing fitting disposable masks that cover the nose and mouth, such as surgical mask and nose and dust mask. Face masks are not approved by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health or NIOSH for protection against any regulated hazardous material. Face masks help stop droplets from being sprayed by person wearing them. They also keep splashes or sprays from reaching the mouth and nose of the person wearing the face mask and are therefore 
useful when cleaning up spills of infectious materials. They are not designed to protect you against breathing in gases, bubbles, and very small particles. Face masks should be used once and then disposed of. For N95s, N95s are respirators which are approved by NIOSH for use against certain selected airborne particulates with use as a part of the respira uh, respiratory protection program. They are used only for protection against non-oily particulates. Their use against acid or solvent aerosols is only a manufacturer suggestion. N95s are specially not approved for use with nanomaterials. However, there are some warning on N95. There are nine different class, uh, classification of respirator particulate filters based on three different levels of resistance to oily aerosols and filter efficiency. Here, the respirator can be classified into three classes. Class N is the respirator for non-resistant to oil, R, resistant or somewhat to oil, and P, oil-proof or strongly resistant to oil. And for efficiency, you can see the number written on the mask. 95% means 95% efficient at stopping particles of 0.3 microns in diameter. 97% efficient at stopping particles of 0.3 microns. And for 99.97%, show efficiency but refer to as 100% as stopping particles of 0.3 micron in diameter. Here are examples of some personal protective equipment that you can be uh, that you can use in the lab. First, there are different different type of uh, safety glasses and goggles. Also for the gloves, lab clothes, respirator, earplug, you can also select them according to the work that you're doing. Double all safety levels, their requirements and practices. Double all safety levels, or BSL, or pathogen protection levels, is a set of biocontainment precautions required to isolate dangerous biological agents in an enclosed laboratory facility. The level of containment range from the lowest biosafety level 1 or BSL1 to the highest at level 4 or BSL4. For biosafety level 1, when working with agents not known to consistently cause disease in healthy adults, biosafety level 1 applies. No extra PPE is required over the standard microbiological practices when handling BSL-1 agent. For BSL-1 PPE includes standard laboratory coats or gowns, gloves, eye and face protection as needed, other required protective equipment, laboratory bench and sink required for secondary barriers. Lab technicians must wash their hands prior to leaving the lab. But also safety level two, when working with moderate risk agents associated with very severity of human disease, but also safety level two is required. This includes agents that can be transmitted through uh, percutaneous injury, like puncture of the skin, inject ingestion, or mucous membrane exposure. BSL2 practices include all BSL1 practices plus limited access, biohazard warning signs, sharps, precaution, and a biosafety manual defining necessary waste decontamination or medical surveillance policies. Here are some examples of BSL-1 PPE, which includes gowns, 
gloves, face and eye protection as needed, other required protective equipment, but all safety cabinets or other physical containment devices are required for all manip manipulations of agents that cause splashes or aerosolization of infectious materials. Secondary containment barriers of BSL-2 include sinks for hand washing and autoclaves in addition to those required for BSL-1. Biosafety Level 3 Any facility working with indigenous or exotic agent that may cause serious disease or are potentially lethal through inhalation should follow guidelines of BSL-3 facilities. BSL-3 practices include BSL-2 practices as well as in control, assess and decontamination of laboratory clothing before washing in all waste. But all safety cabinets or other physical containment devices are needed for all open manipulation of agents and serve as a primary engineering control barrier. BSL-3 PPE includes protective laboratory clothing, for example clothes, coats, gowns, smocks, or uniform designed for lab use, gloves, eye, face, uh, respiratory protection as needed, other required protective equipment, physical separation from access corridors, self-closing double door access through an airlock or anteroom, non of laboratory air, negative pressure lab spaces, and a sink near the lab exit. But also safety level 4. The most hazardous of material required for but also safety level 4. This is required when working with dangerous or exotic agents which pose a high individual risk of lab infections that are frequently fatal, do not have vaccines or treatments and are transmitted by aerosol. It is also required for agents with an unknown risk of transmission and those with, and those with a close or identical antigenic relationship to an agent known to require BSL-4. For BSL-4 personal protective equipment, all BSL-3 practices plus the following. Chain clothes before entering lab, shower upon exiting lab, and decontaminate all material prior to exiting facility. How to safely remove disposable gloves. Do you know how to remove your disposable glove safely? A simple task, you might think, but it's not a straightforward procedure. One wrong move could end up with damage to the skin, not to mention, not to mention contaminating the immediate surroundings. Therefore, it's really important to know how to remove gloves safely. But before we focus on the important topic of the safe gloves removal, there are a few points to note when selecting a disposable glove to wear in the first place. The chosen gloves need to provide suitable protection for the task and should be the correct side. Here are steps of how to safely remove disposable gloves. Please be noted that hands should be clean and dry before putting a glove on. First step. Pinch and hold the outside of the glove near the wrist area. Second, peel downwards away from wrist, turning the gloves inside out. Third step, pull the gloves away until it is removed from the hand and hold the inside out glove with the gloved hand. Fourth step, with your ungloved hand, slide your fingers under the wrist of the remaining gloves taking care not to touch the outside of the glove. Fifth step. Again, peel downwards away from the wrist, turning the gloves inside out. And for the last step, 
Continue to pull the glove down and over the inside of glove being held in your gloved hand. This will ensure that both gloves are inside out, one glove envelope inside the other, with no contaminants on the bare hands. The type of PPE used will vary based on the level of precautions required, such as standard and contact, droplet or airborne infection isolation precautions. Here are the procedure of how to remove and putting on the PPE. The procedure for putting on and removing PPE should be tailored to the specific type of PPE. For the step of putting on PPE, first, you will need to perform hand hygiene. Second, put on gown. Gown should be fully covered torso from neck to knees, arms to end of wrist. Third, put on mask or respirator. Secure tights or elastic bands at the middle of head and neck. Then fit flexible band to nose bridge and fit snug to face and below chin. Fourth, put on eye protection such as goggles or face shield over face and eyes and adjust to fit. And last, put on gloves and extend to cover wrist of isolation gown. There are a variety of ways to safely remove PPE without contaminating your clothing, skin or mucous membranes with potentially infectious materials. Remove PPE in the following sequence. First, remove gloves. Please remember that outside of gloves are contaminated. If your hands get contaminated during glove removal, immediately wash your hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer and discard cloth in a waste container. Second, remove gown. Gown front and sleeves are always contaminated. You should pull gowns away from neck and shoulders, touching inside of gown only, and turn gown inside out. Then, for roll into a bundle and discard in a waste container. Third, perform hand hygiene. Fourth, Remove eye protection. You should remove goggles or face shield from the back of the lifting headband and ear pieces. If the item is reusable, place in disinate a receptacle of reprocessing. Otherwise, discard the waste in the waste container. Fifth, remove mask or respirator. Front of mask or respirator is contaminated, so do not touch. If your hands get contaminated during mask or respirator removal, immediately wash your hands or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Then, grab bottle tight, bottom tights and elastic of the mask or respirator, then the ones at the top, and remove without touching the front, and discard in a waste container. And the last step, perform hand hygiene. Please remember that you should wash hand immediately after removing all PPE. After you have learned how to use PPE properly, here are some questions that I would like you to check and answer in mind. If you have some uh, question on each question, you can comment down below and I will contact you and explain on what uh, you have a question on. The, course, the first question is, what is PPE and what does it stand for? Second question, what are PPE core requirements? Third question, what are steps to put on and take off PPE? Fourth question, what is the difference between gowns and coveralls? Fifth question. What type of gloves is recommended to care for COVID-19 patients in healthcare setting? And the last question. What makes N95 respirators different from face mask or surgical mask? Here are some exercises and tasks that I would like you to fill out the blank. Please describe the type of PPE required to perform tasks stated below. The task today is 
you are working with liquid culture preparation of influenza A virus. For the risk control measures, you have two options. The first option is non-risk control measures. And for the second situation, you've got Biological Safety Cabinet or BSC as a risk control measure. Please fill out what kind of PPE you need between both situations. Thanks for watching the video and wish you a present day. Bye bye.